Okay, now here we have question number three from the P1 mock exam for the IAL paper. It's a mock exam that I gave my students and compiled from various sources. Um, this question is actually from, I think, the A-level in, in the UK specimen paper. But anyway, I'm going to go through this question now. It's about transformations of graphs. It says um, the figure one shows a sketch of a curve with the equation y equals g of x. Okay, we don't have any other information about this curve. We don't know its actual equation. It looks like it's some sort of a quadratic type of curve, maybe, but we can't be sure. Um, the curve has a single turning point, a minimum, at the point m, 4 minus 1.5. The curve crosses the x-axis at two points, p, 2, 0, and q, 7, 0. And we also know that the curve crosses the y-axis at a single point, r, 0, 5. Okay, now state the coordinates of the turning point of the curve with the equation y equals 2g of x. Okay, so now the turning point is m. And we want to see what happens when it goes through the transformation y equals g of 2x. Okay, so the coordinates of m are 4 and minus 1. Point, oops, what am I doing? <coughs> minus 1.5. Now, the transformation y equals g of 2x, y, sorry, two, oh, 2 times g of x, this is something where the whole function is being multiplied by 2. It's not like you're replacing the x with 2x, it's not like where the 2 is inside here, the 2 is outside here. So, first of all, when you're multiplying, like when you're multiplying, it's always going to be some sort of a, a stretch, okay, it's going to be some sort of a stretch. You have to multiply one of the coordinates by uh, a particular number. So when it's outside the function, it's called a vertical stretch. A vertical stretch. Right. And you can think of it as, well, everything acts normal because it's outside the function. It's inside the function, it starts acting weird. Because outside the function, okay, the stretch factor is going to be 2. Okay, the number that you're multiplying is the stretch factor. If it was inside the function, if it was g of 2x, then it would be a horizontal stretch where it means you change the x coordinate <coughs> and you would multiply by the reciprocal of this number. But it's not this, it's this. So you multiply by 2. What do you multiply by 2? You multiply the y values by 2. So it affects the y values. Okay, the y coordinates are changed. So the y coordinate has to be multiplied by 2. So this goes to its new point. The x coordinate stays the same. The y coordinate becomes minus 1.5 times 2, which is minus 3. So there is, those are the coordinates of the turning point after the transformation, 4 minus 3. Okay, then it says, state the largest root of the equation gx plus 1 equals 0. So first of all, what is the root of an equation? Now the root of an equation is, or, uh, are, is, or are the places, okay, the root, or the roots of the equation are where the, where the curve passes through the x-axis. They sometimes call these solutions to the equation, sometimes they call those zeros, sometimes they call the roots. Okay, so if you have an equation and you make it equal to zero, okay, uh, you want to find where it crosses the x-axis. So here the roots of the equation at the moment are two zero and seven zero. And it's saying state the largest root of the equation gx plus one equals zero. So this is a transformation which represents a translation where you have to add the something to um, one of the coordinates. Now, the two roots of the equation are p and q, so let me write them both down for now. p is 2, 0, and q is 7, 0. Now, those are the roots of y equals g of x. So y equals g of x plus 1 equals 0. This is an equation where what's happened to g of x is you have changed the x Okay, you have replaced it by x plus 1. Now, if you add something inside the function, it's always horizontal. It's a horizontal translation. Okay, it's a translation which is horizontal. If you added it outside the function, the whole function is raised by 1. So it's a vertical translation. But when it's outside the function, it acts normal. It's going to be one unit up here. But it's inside the function, it acts kind of where it's going to be the opposite. So it's going to be one unit to the left. So we have to basically take away one from all the x coordinates. 
So we've got to take away one from the two and take away one from the seven. So the new coordinates of P will be one, zero. You, take, you change the X and you leave the Y as it is. And the new coordinate of Q is going to be six, zero. So the largest root of the equation is X equals six. X equals six is the largest root. All right, you have to just, the, the root is the X value of, okay, you just write it as, you don't write the coordinate, you write the X value. X equals six is the largest root of this equation. Okay, so there we have the answer for part B. Pretty simple stuff. You could do this in a couple of seconds, really. I'm just trying to explain it, so I'm taking a bit longer. Then C says, state the range of values for which G dash X is less than or equal to zero. Okay, G dash X is less than or equal to zero. What, what does this mean? This means the gradient of GX, the differential of GX, the gradient of GX. So we're going to find where, what are the range of values where the gradient of this curve is less than or equal to zero. Now the gradient of a curve, okay, can be thought of as the way the tangent of the curve is. So here you can see the tangent here, it's kind of like a negative tangent all the way over here like it whoops the tan tangent keeps changing let me just lock this in place can I do that yes I can the tangent keeps changing okay but you can see here it's negative the tangent is negative it keeps getting uh, here it's getting less steep until it reaches this point M at the point M where it turns the gradient is zero so it's equal to zero when x equals, this is when x equals four here. This is the point x equals four. And when, if you go, the values of x which are greater, greater than four, you can see that the gradient starts becoming positive. It's a positive gradient over here. You can see that. Okay, the gradient starts getting positive. So the gradient is negative when x equals less than four. It's equal to, the gradient is equal to zero when x equals four. So we can say the range of values of x for which the gradient of the curve is less than zero are when x is less than or equal to four. When x is less than or equal to four, this curve will have a negative gradient. Okay, when x is less than four, it has a negative gradient. When it's equal to four, it has a zero gradient. So it's less than or equal to four for the value, the gradient is less than or equal to, to zero, sorry, when x <coughs> is less than or equal to four. Okay, so the gradient is zero for the values of x less than four and equal to zero. The gradient is less than zero when x is less than four and, and x, the gradient is equal to zero when x is equal to four, sorry. Now, given that the equation gx plus k equals zero, where k is a constant, has no real roots, straight state the range of possible values for k. Now, something will have no real roots, okay, when it never touches the x-axis. Like for this particular curve, okay, um, let me just try to trace it. I'm not doing that good of a job, but it, oops, let me do it a bit better than that. Okay, let me try and trace this curve. Mm -hmm. That's acceptable, I guess. All right, now, when the curve cuts through the x-axis, it has roots. In this particular case, it has two real roots. If it just touched the x-axis, then it would have one root. If it turns before it ever reaches the x-axis, then it has no roots. So right now, it will have no roots. So they're telling us about the curve y equals f of x, uh, sorry, y equals g of x plus k. y equals g of x plus k. So y equals g of x plus k. That's like a transform that's like a translation of k units upwards. So it's like zero k. Translation of zero k. So that means you want they want you to tell they want us to tell us what is the value that should go in this place here for this to have no roots. Now if k right now this point here, this y value here where this curve turns is minus one point five. Okay? <coughs> if k was equal to say uh, less like one for example it would go up by one space so it still have two roots right if it goes up by 1.5 it 
it will touch the curve at 4, x equals 4, so it will have one root. If it goes up by more than 1.5, it will never touch the x-axis, and that's the scenario that they're asking us to consider. Okay, given that the equation here, x plus k equals 0, where k is a constant, has no real roots, state the range of possible values for k. So we, we can see that k, as long as it's greater than 1.5, uh, this curve will never touch the x-axis. Okay, because you, you have to raise it by the value of k. So if k is less than 1.5, it will still have two roots. If it was equal to 1.5, it will have one root. If it's more than 1.5, it will have no real roots. So we can say when k is greater than, when k is greater than 1.5, k is greater than 1.5. You can't say equals 2 because then it would have one root. We want there to be no roots. So it has to be greater than here. Okay, and there we have the end of that question. That's a pretty um, basic one on transformations of curves. Okay.